Have you ever wondered what the air traffic controller office space looked like? Imagine a massive long board with thousands of colorful buttons. Well, you're not far from the truth. In this video, we'll be delving into the essential equipment found in three pivotal air traffic control positions. The aerodome working position, the approach control, and the area control working position. Get ready to master the tools that keep our skies safe and our flights on track. Let's start our exploration with the backbone of every controller working position, or CWP. Air ground radios are the lifeline of communication, ensuring controllers can transmit and receive crucial information on both primary and secondary frequencies. This comprehensive coverage is essential for seamless coordination within the allocated airspace. Next, we have the Closed Circuit Information System, or CCIS, which acts as eyes and ears of the controller. That CCIS sounds like a weird acronym, but it is actually really important for the controller to make correct decisions. It displays, for example, relevant meteorological data, wind information, current air pressure setting, measured visibility, and weather forecast. This is also where to look for aeronautical charts, NOTAMs, and the status of all navigational equipment or restrictions in the airspace. The clock serves as the heartbeat, synchronizing actions, and ensuring precise timing in every operation. The Flight Progress Board, FPB, and Flight Progress Strips, FPS, are like the control center's soul. They display critical flight data, allowing controllers to track and manage aircraft movements efficiently. As technology advances, electronic equivalents are replacing these traditional tools, streamlining the process further. Maps, charts, and quick reference information sheets provide a visual aid offering a comprehensive overview of the airspace and flight details. This information is indispensable for making split-second decisions. Additionally, the Online Data Interchange OLDI, and radar displays offer crucial flight plan data and real-time updates, enabling controllers to adapt swiftly to changing scenarios. Welcome to the tower working position, the heart of tower control operations, where controllers use specialized tools to ensure the safety and efficiency of aircraft movements at the airport. Each piece of equipment here has a crucial role and we're about to break it down for you. First up, we have the barometric altimeter setting indicator, commonly referred to as the QNH. This device ensures that all aircraft are at the correct altitude after takeoff by providing precise air pressure information. It's essential for maintaining safe separation between aircraft. To find out more about QNH and altimeter settings, check out our other video here. Now, binoculars may not seem out of place in your grandma's attic, but for tower controllers, they are a vital tool. These binoculars enhance visual acuity, allowing controllers to closely monitor aircraft movements. This is especially important in situations where ground movement radars might not provide the required level of detail, or in smaller airports, the ground radar doesn't even exist. The lighting control panel is next on our list. The panel is all about optimizing visibility during different times of the day and in different weather conditions. It's the tower controller's responsibility to act as a maestro operating all the runway lights, taxiway lights, touchdown zone lights, stop bar lights, and poppy lights. This way they can ensure that the entire airport is lit. In low visibility scenarios, the RVR, runway visual range, and visibility indicators become crucial. These tools provide real-time information about visibility on the runways, allowing controllers to make informed decisions regarding takeoffs and landings. Imagine for a moment that traditional communication methods fail. That's where the pistol flare gun and the signaling lamp come into play. They serve as emergency signaling devices, offering a reliable means of communication between the tower and aircraft. And how, you may ask? When there's a reason to believe that the pilot of an aircraft doesn't hear what the controller says, you can just pick up the lamp, point it toward the aircraft, and start shooting different colored signals toward the aircraft. Usually, there's a quick reference sticker on the side of the lamp showing what the different colors of the lamp or the flare gun ammo mean to the pilot. Now, to stay ahead of the weather, tower controllers use the wind indicator. This nifty device provides information about wind direction and speed, enabling controllers to make runway and traffic flow adjustments. The indicator is placed somewhere where it's really easy to read, since this is information that has to be passed to every single aircraft either landing or taking off. 
then there are some devices or systems in place that are hopefully never needed. These are, for example, a crash alarm button or a direct audio announcement system to the airport fire department in case of a worst case scenario around the airport. Some airports may also have a crash grid map to provide the fire service units with specific coordinates where the accident has happened. In the approach control working position, controllers are responsible for managing the flow of traffic as aircraft approach and depart from an airport. Much of the equipment used here is just the same as in the tower. For example, the radios, CCIS information system, oldie data connections, telephone system, and weather displays. As you probably figured out, some devices are completely useless. There's no point having a signaling lamp, a flare gun, a nerf gun, or any other kind of gun in here. Since the controllers in this work environment also need to see the aircraft they're responsible for, but there may be hardly any windows in the facility. That's why the radar is the approach controller's best friend. Let's dive a little deeper into what that fascinating radar actually is and what the whole system consists of. There are many systems working in the background of the radar display, which the controller is eyeballing constantly. Tools like Flight Data Processing System, FDPS, the Surveillance Data Processing System, SDPS, and the Multi-Radar Data Processing System, MRDPS, come into play, offering controllers a comprehensive view of aircraft positions and aiding in maintaining optimal spacing between flights. There are also some safety net tools embedded into the radar system, acting as both preventive assistance systems and as a last line of defense in critical situations such as the short-term conflict alert system, STACA, which provides immediate alerts when aircraft trajectories converge, allowing controllers to take rapid corrective actions to ensure safe separation. The Minimum Safe Altitude Warning System, MSAW, serves as a crucial safety net, alerting controllers if an aircraft's altitude falls below a safe threshold, thereby preventing potential collisions to the ground. Automation support tools, AST, are also utilized to assist in managing complex airspace scenarios by processing vast amounts of data and providing clear, concise information for making informed decisions. Inter-unit communication equipment and direct telephone lines play a crucial role in facilitating seamless coordination between different ATS units, ensuring smooth operations across the entire airspace. Picture this. You're an approach controller and suddenly the conflict alert system goes off. It's like having a GPS that screams recalculating every time you miss a turn. Surveillance Data Processing System, SDPS, and Multi-Radar Data Processing System, MRDPS, sound like something out of a sci-fi movie. But in reality, there are controllers' super goggles helping them see through clouds and mist like Superman. Now, what about our final chapter in our controller working position trio? the area control position. To be completely honest, this is almost identical to the approach control position. If you didn't know which one you were looking at, you probably wouldn't notice the difference. In area control, it's all about managing vast expanses of airspace. It's like playing a giant game of traffic Tetris, but with much higher stakes. No pressure, right? Depending on the area control ATC unit, one controller may be even responsible for an airspace as large as the entire country that they're working in. In area control, it's all about planning everything well in advance. In order to do so, the controllers use many of the radar system's planning tools and safety nets for a safe, orderly, and expeditious traffic flow. One main tool is AMAN Arrival Manager. This tool calculates timings for aircraft arriving at the airport so that every flight has its own place in the sequence. Another useful system is MTCD, Medium Term Conflict Detection. The system calculates all the aircraft planned routes and informs the controller if any of the projected flight paths are in the potential conflict at some point in the future. Since there are usually some sort of airspace restrictions that have to be avoided, as an air controller, you may want to have the APW Area Proximity Warning turned on. That will give you enough time to react to all the possibly dangerous airspace infringements that could possibly ruin your whole workday. All of these tools and safety nets are like your overprotective grandma making sure you're wearing a helmet when you ride your bike. Don't forget your MSAW helmet, dear. The impact of air traffic control ATC equipment on aviation safety is nothing short of remarkable. Did you know that advanced ATC systems have contributed to a staggering 80% reduction in mid-air collisions over the past two decades? 
This dramatic improvement can be attributed to the precision and real-time monitoring capabilities of modern radar and surveillance technologies. Additionally, the Minimum Safe Altitude Warning System, MSAW, has played a pivotal role in averting potential disasters, with over 95% of altitude-related incidents swiftly detected and resolved thanks to this crucial safety net. In fact, according to recent studies, the incorporation of conflict alert systems alone has led to a 60% decrease in near-miss incidents. These statistics underscore the indispensable role of ATC equipment and safeguarding the skies and ensuring the well-being of millions of passengers worldwide. With each passing day, these systems continue to set new standards of aviation safety, solidifying their place as the unsung heroes of our skies. As we soar into the future, the world of air traffic control is poised to undergo a technological revolution. Emerging innovations are set to redefine how controllers manage the complex dance of aircraft in our skies. One such groundbreaking advancement is the integration of artificial intelligence and machine learning algorithms. These intelligent systems can analyze vast amounts of data in real time, predicting and mitigating potential conflicts before they even arise. Additionally, the advent of next-gen surveillance technologies like Wide Area Multilateration WAM, and Automatic Dependent Surveillance Broadcast ADSB, promise enhanced accuracy and coverage, enabling controllers to track aircraft with unprecedented precision. Moreover, the implementation of virtual reality and augmented reality interfaces is on the horizon, providing controllers with immersive 3D visualizations of airspace dynamics. These technologies not only hold the promise of increasing efficiency and safety, but also offer a glimpse into a future where air travel is more streamlined and secure than ever before. Buckle up because the future of air traffic control is set to be an exhilarating ride into uncharted technological skies. What do you think about the behind the scenes workings of air traffic control? Feel free to share any questions or insights you have about the ATC equipment in the comment section below. In the future, we'll delve deeper into the intricate functionalities of specific equipment, providing you with a comprehensive understanding of how these tools are employed in real-world scenarios. So stay tuned and join us as we continue our journey through the mastery of ATC. Until then, fly high and stay safe.